and welcome to the platform. My name remains Olu Aluchi from Da Silva. And with me on today's program is I'm Professor Tani Kande of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital. I'm a professor of public health and a consultant public health physician. Uh, there is this concept that is simply popular in town, family planning. What can you explain to us about family planning? Well, family planning is an age-long thing now. Uh, and it's about individuals and families having the choice to make as to the spacing of their uh, children, as well as uh, having the numbers they desire as well as uh, also helping those who are infertile to be able to have uh, the desired number of children. So that's uh, what family planning is. And there are, well, even in the whole very, very old days, hundreds of years back, uh, we know uh, of the various ways that um, families have tried to restrict the number of children they, they have usually through natural methods that they've applied in those days, and some through some traditional methods. But today, we have um, the modern methods of uh, family planning, which is achieved through the use of uh, contraceptives, although the use of uh, natural methods is still very much in place, particularly with some types of uh, religion or faith. So family planning in itself is um, very important, otherwise people will bite more than they can chew, either at family, family level. By having too many children, it means you have a lot more burden to take care of. Even as a nation too, by getting too populated beyond the resources of the country, then there are bound to be challenges with um, provision of uh, social services like education, health and so on. More importantly, is the effect of uh, not planning family on health. Um, we know we, studies have shown very clearly that those who don't uh, do family planning are prone to a lot of uh, ailments, like uh, from the mother's side or the woman's side. Um, frequent um, bearing of children can affect their health. It can even lead to deaths among them. Um, mothers, uh, but really they have too frequent uh, children and having it, uh, too many of them. Uh, it becomes a risk factor for death during um, delivery or during labor. We also know that um, children also often die if, if uh, they're not well spaced because um, the attention required to take care of these children and the resources required are not very much in place to make these children grow well, particularly in terms of nutrition. And so they become susceptible to a kind of number of uh, ailments that make them die easily. And we also know that um, even some, even they are, they are born with low bad weight because uh, of the problem of uh, not, the mothers not having uh, family planning. And commonly too are, the, are those who don't even want to have any pregnancy. But because they are not practicing any form of uh, contraceptives, they get uh, pregnant. And the tendency with that is to try to abort such uh, pregnancies. And uh, we know that with abortion comes a lot of um, deaths and even a lot of uh, sicknesses among the ladies that do this. Because um, in Nigeria, abortion is still illegal. And so because it's illegal, people do it um, undercover and don't go to good places to get it done and therefore they run the risk of uh, getting infected in the process and some of them lose so much blood in the process and may eventually die or even result in um, infertility later in life. So uh, family planning is very very important and so good and it's been promoted by government and various organizations to see that um, People at, their, at various levels are able to choose the number of children they want and space the children uh, appropriately. We often suggest to people that 
there should be a three years gap between children. That's, and to attain that, you need to use some contraceptives or use some uh, natural family planning methods. Uh, grand grandparents, that's what they do, and they have a way of getting it done. But today, you find that people just breed children almost every year, and they don't have the capacity to take care of them well. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a social problem when you have uh, children that are not, you don't have the time, you don't have the resources to take care of, they become a menace to the society. So family planning itself is very important. All right. Uh, would you advise that instead of having so many people dying as a result of uh, tenth, tenth, uh abortion, will it not be appropriate to legalize abortion outright? Well, it's difficult. There are some countries that have legalized abortion, but it's something that is subject to a lot of uh, religious uh, beliefs of people. Uh, Nigeria, for example, we are a very religious nation. Most people are either Christians or, or Muslims, and none of these uh, faiths uh, will permit that one should support um, abortion, so to say. It's like uh, terminating a life, and that's uh, seen by just religious bodies or indi even individuals as um, you are like a murderer. So it's uh, not likely that you have a, a movement in Nigeria trying to see that abortion is legalized. I think the way to it is to, for such people to have easy, easy access to the use of contraceptives to prevent such pregnancies. Okay. If uh, religion will prevent abortion, why is religion not preventing family planning? Because to the best of my knowledge, God instructed us to be fruitful and multiply and cleanse the whole earth. Well, I think uh, our definition of being fruitful varies. Um, if you are fruitful and you cannot feed the fruit, then you are not, you are not, you have not done anything. And so to be fruitful, even in the biblical times, you still have people who in their being fruitful are not just breeding children up to 20 uh, for a woman. No, they still have some controls uh, over the number of children they, they have. And then that time, the biblical period, maybe you want to say that um, you, we don't have the modern forms of uh, contraception, but where they are available. Being fruitful does not mean that you should be too much in numbers. It is more about the quality of what you have. And so if you are fruitful to having them in uh, so many and you cannot take care of them, you still go, up, go back and blame the same God <laughs> that has uh, said you should be fruitful. So it doesn't make sense to, to want to just use that because it's the, for us, uh, for me, I'm a Christian, so I know that the scripture says that who cannot provide for his own is worse than an infidel. So the same Bible is saying that. It now, it's not telling you that, yes, you should be fruitful, but provide for the number that you can take care of. All right, sir. There are social vices among our youths these days. What do you think is responsible for these social vices? Well, to some extent, you can trace it to so many things. But in the line of the, the issue we are discussing on family planning, this, uh, those things are happening just because um, parenting now is very bad. Um, people don't have time to take care of these children they, uh, they are bringing forth um, because they are trying to make ends meet running here and there. And the, the child is left alone. And it has brought a lot of societal decadence. If at various levels you, the number of children you have, you have enough time for them, enough resources for them, you find that some people is because even for economic reasons that they have all this mess. They want to, they don't have the resources from their family and then they go out to either to steal or to take drugs to be able to steal or do all, all kinds of things. So if, uh, even at the society level, now going to school means a, a lot of money these days. In the past, when Nigeria population was not as much as this, you f people were going to school almost for free. But today, you can't run that kind of cost uh, for the number of Nigerians that we have, about 200 million people. So how will, you, how will government be able to do that, to provide all these social needs? 
So it's, it allows for miscreants to come up and uh, together with some other factors that are responsible for this in our society. More importantly, parenting is very bad. And parenting, if, if uh, you can't have the time and resources to take care of more than one child, limit it to one. Why, why burden the society with the problems of uh, not, you not taking care of your child? Do you foresee a future when there will be a situation as to how many children an individual or family can have? <laughs> Well, you see, Nigeria has a, a national population policy. And as far back as seven, tens of years back, which uh, suggests that uh, the, a woman should not have more than four children. And there are even things to make that work, like the National Insurance Scheme, for example. If you're on the scheme, it takes care of you and your spouse and children that are less than 18 years that are not more than four. So it means if you have more than four, you have to, you have to take care of the extra body. So in, in a way, so to say, Nigeria has a way of, uh, has already has, poli already has policies, not a law, but policies that guides the number of children that uh, people should have. Well, any government that is trying to introduce that with, uh, with religion, you may, will find it very tough. You have just quoted to me, the, <laughs> go on, multiply. <laughs> so that's, that's what they will use to go and multiply and attack any government that is trying to do that. They will not look into the benefits that comes with uh, such laws. You know, that was done in China. And China, imagine the progress they have been having of recent. And now they have even chosen to now increase. That okay, beyond one, now I have two. So that's, uh, I think it's, it's a good way to go, but I can't think of how soon that will happen in this country. Um, going back to the issue of family planning, are there possible uh, complications as a result of trying to invite the family planning? Yes, we have what we call side effects. They are not really complications, so to say. Um, I often tell people that everything you take in this world has potential side effects. If you take too much water, it can, it can have its effect. So it is with uh, contraceptives too, but it's not as those side effects are not as common as people want to want to say and then prevent people from using them. We know, for example, the hormonal types of uh, contraceptives. In some people, it can raise their blood pressure. It can make even their menses not uh, to have uh, to have challenges. It can also make some people to become obese. So those are side effects, so to say but not really complications. But they are far less than to, compared to the benefits that come with family planning. Okay. Um, it is often uh, advocated that teenagers and youths should embark on family planning. Will this not, in a way, encourage promiscuity? Yeah, well, that's the understanding of the average Nigerian, that uh, if you encourage adolescents, teenagers to assess uh, use of contraceptives, it, it will increase the uh, promiscuity or sexuality. But I must, I must say that's what we call sexuality education. Sexuality education is not just about promoting contraceptives. It's about promoting how you, uh, you can also even avoid sex, making you know the dangers that comes with it. And if you must do, what you, or what you need to take. So it's not totally against religion to provide sexuality education. Now, unfortunately, most of our pastors, imams, will not want this imbibed into what they are doing now. But, and it's because of the, there's some level of ignorance about what sexuality education is. Sexuality education is not really promoting promiscuity. But we deceive ourselves a lot in this country, and we pretend a lot. You, you want to think that that child of yours that is 16 year old, 17 year old, is not seeing a boy. You are just deceiving yourself. So it's, it's better to face the reality, uh, to encourage the person, look, get close to your God, and that's the only, what can help you from getting too close to the level of having uh, fornication or with uh, another, another person. 
So if you are not able to do this, <laughs> then go, to the other, go for the other option. We have had so many people live, live either schooling terminated because when they are pregnant, they can no longer further their education. Or in the process of being pregnant, they try to uh, abort it so that the parents will not even know, and then they, they die. So it's better for us to face the reality on ground. In the past, the young people are not as uh, promiscuous as we have it today. It's the pornography, the social media is awash with all these kind of things. And therefore, it is, you, know, you have to know which kind of a child you have, continue to teach sexuality education, at, even at the home level, at the family level, to the students, so that they can take appropriate uh, options. And for me, government is also, also promoting it. There are youth-friendly um, uh, family planning services where they can be counseled on what to do and the best of the choices of the contraceptives that they can use at that age. All right. Thank you for talking to us, Professor. You're welcome. We'll be welcome again some other times. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you. Thanks for having me.